Previously on The Way We Did It, we took the Lance on its first big road trip out to Yellowstone. We are now heading to Southern Colorado to see the Great Sand Dunes National Park and explore the Rio Grande River before making a last minute decision to tack on an adventurous detour. Before we set off on our trip, we had to do a little housekeeping. The two main storage cabinets weren't exactly working for us. Since they were just a big open space, it was difficult to use them efficiently. So we decided to build some shelves. With the price of wood on the rise due to COVID-19, we saved some money by using the plywood from the bunk bed above the dinette. Dave cut it to the exact cabinet dimensions and glued small pieces of wood underneath to give the shelves more support. I then gray washed each one to match the interior color of the lance. Dave installed the shelves using command strips so we wouldn't have to put any holes in the insulated walls. He also recommends wearing a cowboy hat during installation. The final outcome looked great. Both cabinets can hold twice as many items and do so in a more organized way. We also got a command hook to hold a broom and a small garbage can on the door. We were now off to the sand dunes, which entailed maneuvering through Denver traffic and the wide open plains between there and the city of Colorado Springs. Where nearby is a large military base, so the sight of transport helicopters meant it was time to turn off the highway. The scenery got more and more rocky as the road followed the Arkansas River into the Bighorn Sheep Canyon, which was beautifully lit by the sunset. We followed an old friend to the outskirts of Salida, where we booked a night at the KOA. We had just enough sunlight to set up camp before devouring some tacos and settling in for the night. Now, let's check out the campground. We were staying at the Salida Mount Chavano KOA. The campground was located on a large hill with each tier perfectly graded for level sites. It also had a few cabins and tent sites tucked away from the RVs. While the surrounding mountainous terrain made it feel rather remote, it was only a 15 minute drive into town. There was a playground for children and dogs, along with a small creek that ran through the property, which was a nice place to go for a morning walk. After finishing up some work, it was time to head out. We spent the morning exploring the charming town of Salida. Known as the heart of the Rockies, it's the home base for every type of outdoor activity you can think of. It also has some pretty amazing food. The first stop on our mini food tour was the Little Red Hen Bakery. Their homemade blueberry scones were seriously some of the best we've ever had. Our second stop was at Bunny and Clyde's, where we enjoyed a savory breakfast quiche and smoothies. For a little pick-me-up, we grabbed a couple of tasty cold brews from the Brown Dog Coffee Company before walking off our meals in Riverside Park. Its main path ran alongside the Arkansas River, with access to man-made shallow pools for families to swim in. It was also a great spot to watch rafters paddle their way through the rapids. 
Since Dave's parents actually do a little beekeeping back home, we couldn't resist popping into this adorable store called the Beekeepers Honey Boutique. It turned out that they are the oldest honey company in the state of Colorado, dating back to 1908. They own thousands of hives and even have a bee truck that they take around the country to help pollinate crops. With some honey in hand, it was time to leave Salida. A little side note, we are learning how to explore cities with our truck camper and found that grocery store parking lots are always reliable. We continued south through the emptiness of the high desert. Due to the lack of any landmarks, it was one of those roads that makes you feel like you're not making any progress towards your destination. After what felt like forever, but was really just an hour, we arrived. Now, let's check out the campground. We are staying at the Alamosa KOA. It's located just eight minutes from town and 25 to the national park. It has a pool and an area with games like basketball and cornhole. We booked one of their new patio sites that comes with a dining area, grill, and fire pit. After a quick lunch, we checked out Alamosa's disc golf course. We started playing disc golf in 2020 during lockdown and found it to be a fun sport to do together. We really enjoyed Alamosa's course. Although, the one we play back home is in the unobstructed, wide open plains. So we may have hit a few trees throughout our game. now on our way to the Great Sand Dunes National Park. It's an odd pairing of two opposite landscapes. There's this massive pile of sand that spans 233 miles, and it all backs up to the Sangre de Cristo Mountains that soar over 14,000 feet above sea level. We've actually been here several times, which was good because this time around it was unsafe to hike the dunes due to lightning in the area. But here's a flashback from our previous trips. On our first visit, we rented a sled to slide down the dunes, which Dave absolutely loved. <laughs> I, on the other hand, was a bit more apprehensive. So we ended up sliding down together. At the Great Sand Dunes National Park. About to double slide. Ready? <laughs> awesome. On our second visit, we tried hiking to High Dune, which is the highest dune on the first ridge. While trekking through the sand was not easy, our goal is to make it up to that peak. <laughs> we think, you know, we can make it. The surrounding views made it completely worth it. But soon, the wind picked up and we had to abruptly turn around because of lightning. We just saw some lightning. <laughs> so we are heading back to the car. We almost did it though. And while we couldn't glide back down like we did last time, it was still fun jumping and sliding in the sand ourselves. After a little photo op marking the Lance's third national park, we started making our way back to the campground. One last thing to note about the sand dunes are the sunsets. Every time we visited, the lighting has just been unreal. 
and this time was no different. Back at camp, we continued to take full advantage of our patio and ate our dinner outside, which included a loaf of bread we had purchased earlier from the Little Red Hen Bakery. Not wanting to get in between Dave and his food, I put the camera down and settled in for the night. The next morning, after enjoying yet another loaf of bread from the Little Red Hen Bakery, we hit the road. The plan for the day was to head west of Alamosa into the mountains and drive the Silver Thread Byway, which traces the old routes of stagecoach lines and mining camps. As we were driving, we noticed these small wooden signs along the side of the road. We later discovered that they were property markers for ranch land and that each ranch has its own unique pattern. As we entered the Silver Thread Byway, we were not only greeted by Yoda, but with large rocky cliffs that towered overhead. We followed the Rio Grande River up to a lush valley with rolling hills, where we stopped in the town of Creed. It was a quintessential mountain town straight out of Colorado's history books. And its main street was perfectly aligned with the opening of the steep canyon walls of Willow Creek. And its fire station was located inside the walls itself. Since we easily found street parking for the Lance, we got out to stretch our legs. Creed was the last silver boom town in Colorado in the 19th century before being known for the discovery of rich minerals in Willow Creek Canyon. We grabbed a quick coffee to fuel us for the rest of the drive and continued on. Remnants of old mining structures started to appear on the hillside and a scenic overlook with information on the area's history. Before all of our trips, we usually talk through what we want to see but this next stop, Dave surprised me with. It was North Clear Creek Falls, a stunning waterfall that flows over solidified ash from a volcano that erupted 27 million years ago. We pried ourselves away from the falls and followed the trail up to another incredible overlook. As the road climbed in elevation, we passed through endless groves of aspen trees until we hit the continental divide at nearly 11,000 feet above sea level, and the lush valleys shifted to alpine tundra. After reaching the highest point on the byway, the road winds back down, offering incredible views of the San Juan Mountains. We stopped at a scenic overlook with an odd marker pointing to a mountain that has been deteriorating for the last 850 years. One mudslide was so large, it dammed the Gunnison River and formed one of the largest lakes in Colorado. And farther down the road, you actually drive through the mudslide's path. We arrived to Lake City with plans to have lunch before returning to our campsite in Alamosa. As we explored the area, Dave sprung another surprise on me, suggesting that since we were so close to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, that we should just keep going. He did make some good points. 
It'll be another national park we can check off our list. And what's been keeping us away is the fact that it's so remote, making it hard not to jump at the opportunity of being just an hour and a half away. We realized yet another perk to our truck camper, freedom to be spontaneous. Since we had all of our belongings with us, there was no need to go back to the previous campground. So over lunch, Dave made a few calls and booked us another campsite just outside of the national park. Next time on The Way We Did It, we take you to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, where we tested our fear of heights by driving the Lance right up to the edge of one of the steepest cliffs in America. If you'd like to join us on more adventures, be sure to like this video and click that subscribe button. Or for extra perks like your name in the end credits and travel guides to places in our videos, consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to show you the way we did it.